some composers, including myself, have the following problem. I'm using a motorized MIDI controller in order to control my MIDI CCs, such as expression or dynamics. But the motorized MIDI controller is not following the MIDI CC parameters. So when you are using this controller as a volume controller, it is following your volume automatization. So in this video, I will show you how you can fix that problem that the motorized MIDI controller is also following your MIDI CC parameters. Hi, my name is Dennis. I'm a composer and researcher in music and technology and I always are looking for workflow optimization. So this video is for composers who work in Cubase and have a motorized MIDI fader controller based on the Mackie protocol. And what we are also going to do is we are writing translators in an external software environment. So this video contains in total three steps. The first step is that you are installing and downloading the Bow MIDI translator software. The second step contains the creation of translators within the BOEM software. And the third step, you are creating a MIDI control script within the Cubase environment. So first you're going to the BOEM website and there you can download the BOEM MIDI Translator Pro software. Of course, you can also download a trial version but be aware that the trial version does not include the functionality of Save Your Program Translators. After you have downloaded and installed the software, the environment looks like this. So the first thing what we are doing is we are creating a new preset and we call this the Platform X preset. Then we are adding a translator and the first translator we call the platform incoming one or incoming first fader one. So what we are doing now here is that we are translating the protocol to MIDI CC. And the incoming is indeed a MIDI message, but it's not a node on, it's raw MIDI system exclusive. And then what we need to do you need to type E0 PPQQ. Don't need the swell of the MIDI message. And the information is coming from the, in this case, the Platform X controller. And then we are going to out the outgoing message. So in this case, we are sending the information to Cubase. It is also a MIDI message and it's a control change. And the uh, CC would be in this case 102, but you can of course also use another number. In this case, I think it's very safe to use a very high CC number. And the value is uh, here QQ. Uh, we need also to select the MIDI port, so a specific port, and we are choosing BOEM MIDI Translator 1 virtual out. Now we are adding a second translator to it. So by adding add translator, and this translator we call it from incoming first fader two. We need to do this in order to make sure that the fader keeps the position that you want to have. So we need to again, as the incoming information is again a raw MIDI, it is indeed again E0 PP QQ. We don't need to swell the MIDI. Specific port, we're receiving it from the platform. And the outgoing is a MIDI message. But now we are changing it to raw MIDI system exclusive. exclusive. And again E0 PP QQ. And we need also to select a specific port. And in this case, we are selecting the controller again. But now we need to do a third translator and we call this Cubase incoming first fader. We only need one translator for that. So we need to check MIDI message 
and then we select control change. And in this case, we have channel one. And here it's very important that you use the same EDCC that you have used in your very first translator. So in the very first translator, we said the incoming message will be 102. So this number should also be here. So we are writing here 102. We do not need to swallow the information and the specific port is BOM MIDI translator virtual in. And the outgoing in this case is also a MIDI message. And now it's raw MIDI. And here we are typing E0PPQQ. So now we are sending the information back to our controller. So we need again to select a specific on, uh, port. In this case, it's platform X. So now we did this for the first fader. But of course, most of you, including myself, have more faders. So in order to activate this for the other faders, you need to repeat the steps I have showed you, but now with slightly different codes and MIDI messages. So for the first fader, we used E0PPQQ, but for the second fader, you need to use E1PPQQ and not the MIDI message CC102, but for example, the MIDI message CC104. And for the third fader, you're using E2 PPQQ and a MIDI message, for example, 106, and so on and so on. So your last fader, the eighth faders in my example, would have then E7 PPQQ and a MIDI message of CC116. We are going back to Cubase. So you're clicking on no MIDI controller connected. In this case, we are using icon and we are entering the model. I would call it X1. The input port is Bowme Translator 1 and the output port is Bowme Translator 1. So this is very important. So don't select your controller, select Bowme MIDI Translator 1. Now we create the MIDI surface. And now what we're doing here, we're creating eight faders. We have here our first fader, right? Make it a bit bigger. And then we have a second fader, third. And repeat this for eight faders. And these controllers obviously represent now our eight faders on our controller. So you're going now here to fader properties and you see message. And we are now controlling our first controller and you directly see it is control change 102. That's absolutely correct. So I will add this. And this looks very good. Now we're going to our second controller and we are moving our second fader, this 104. And again, repeat this for eight faders. Now we're going to mapping assistant. Here we link these faders to the quick controls. So now we are selecting our first fader and this first fader will be quick control one. The second is quick control two. The third is quick control three, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eight. And now it's very important that here you see mapping configuration and it says value mode is scaled, but we need to jump. So we need to change everything to jump. All the MIDI controllers. All right. Yeah. Last one. And now it's done. So now what we can do is we add, for example, Retrolog and you directly see what's happening on the controller. So he's now directly using this information from the quick controls and representing it also here on the controller. So the first one is the filter cutoff. So now I can, of course, control the filter cutoff here like this. 
But what I also can do is I can control the filter cutoff here. And now you see that I'm moving also the fader. And now when we are adding a second instrument to it, for example, a pet shop, everything changes automatically to uh, the configurations of pet shop. So now we are on pet shop one, and when I'm going to retrolog one, you see it's directly snapping to the right configuration. And you can, of course, also use third-party VST plugins like BBC Orchestra. And now here you see that the first one is uh, the expression, the second one is the dynamics, the third one is reverb. So that's it! I hope that you have learned something from this video. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave a comment in the comment section of the video. Thank you very much.